Good morning. Good, good Sunday morning. How's everybody out there in Facebook world today? Everybody doing all right? So, um, I just wanted to chime in today and talk about something that I think is very important that we talk about. Um, with everything going on, you know what I mean? We got all kinds of stuff going on. We got lockdowns and we got stuff all over the place and people can't go here. We can't touch people. All kinds of stuff is going on, right? Well, I mean, I get it. And that is what it is. But I want to talk about something that's much more deeper than the coronavirus um, that I think many of us struggle with that we're really not um, being honest about. And that is the biggest factor that I think is a huge contributor to us um, having dis-ease in the body. Um, you know, a lot of times our hurts, our pains, what we carry in our hearts and minds um, before any type of uh, so-called pandemic or epidemic or, uh, you know, virus can, you know, actually um, invade our hearts and minds and souls and bodies. Before that happens, a lot of times, you know, our greatest um, way to protect ourselves is what we have going on inside. And a lot of times we're not being honest with, with ourselves, but we're carrying a lot of stuff that maybe is not um, good for us. Number one thing is unforgiveness. Now, everybody that has never came to my show when I was doing my show every Sunday... It was called Live with Carla Nicole, and I had a whole series talking about forgiveness. It was, ha and if you want to go watch that while you're down and out, hashtag in this menu on Facebook after this is over, hashtag forgiveness series, and you'll be able to see all the conversation that I had about the importance of practicing forgiveness. But the thing about it is, um, a lot of times we were never taught how to forgive. We're told to tell someone I'm sorry. We're taught that. We're taught how to tell someone I'm sorry, I apologize. Or even taught to admit when we're wrong. We're taught that. That's something pretty basic. It's the surface of, of forgiveness and things of that nature. But forgiveness is a practice, man. And even if we say out of our mouths that we are sorry or we admit we did something wrong, it's just the surface. We are a lot of times carrying a lot of weight from things that happened in our past. I'm talking about my dad molested me, my uncle abused me, my mother used to beat on me, my brother used to bully me. I mean, I can go on and on and on with the insurmountable things that has been done to many of us that we just haven't let go of. We're holding on to it. And as we hold on to this heaviness and sadness and grief and pain, and we refuse, we refuse to let it go. I refuse to not um, dissipate the anger I have with my father that wasn't there for 30 to 40 years ago. He didn't show up. I was waiting with my baby dolls. I was in the doorway waiting on him and he didn't show up. And so I'm holding on with, with a death grip, holding on with the death grip to the anger that my dad didn't show up. I was waiting there for him and he wasn't there. I had my baby doll and everything. I was waiting for my dad to show up and he, and he didn't show up as an example. I didn't have that, but I'm saying as an example. And so I'm going to hold on to that anger as long as I can, because he was wrong, right? I'm upset. He he failed me. 
he failed me. He disappointed me. He made me upset. Thing about it is, that was 30 years ago. And you're still holding on to that anger. You're still holding on to that hurt. You're still holding on with the death grip how he didn't do what he should have done. And that's just an example. Small example, but huge example for many people. Many people are carrying around weight from 30, 40, sometimes 50 years ago. And won't let it go. And then they wonder why there's so much stagnation in their life. They can't build wealth. They can't have peace in their life. They can't keep a job. They keep turning and turning and turning to drugs, alcohol, sex. To get this uh, crazy unforgiveness fed. But that's not going to help you. You have to learn that forgiveness is a practice. You have to practice it every single day. Forgiveness isn't something you just allow and say, okay, I, I apologize. Or you allow them to apologize and you say, I accept your apology. Nine times out of ten, that's not enough. It's not enough. So we're sitting here upset, cultivated in this anger. Uh, we're, we have this burden. We're gaining all this physical weight, right? Because my dad didn't show up. My mom did this to me. My dad did that to me. My sister did this. All this stuff. And you just allow those offenses to stack up and get higher and higher and higher. And as those, as those things get higher and higher and the weight on your soul gets more and more and more burdening, a lot of times you can't lighten your weight. I'm talking about your physical weight. Because you're still carrying all that crap from before. You won't let it go. You're holding on to it with a death grip. And so now there's this virus. Or there's this epidemic as an example. Or there's all kinds of stuff coming at us. And our bodies are always in fight and flight mode. Because of our blood pressure being high. Because we're still pissed off about what daddy didn't do. 13, 14, maybe 30 years ago. That we have this fight or flight mode in our spirit in our soul so we're holding on to all that unforgiveness so guess what that's a freaking playground for a disease it can just infiltrate in your body easy because you're on you're already inflamed you're already upset you're not letting the stuff go so as you're allowing all of that unforgiveness to seep all into your spirit and into your heart and mind guess what the disease can invade your spirit and heart and mind and now you're suffering for what a disease not by accident. We have to understand if we don't start getting serious about forgiving some of this shit that we're carrying on and on and on from years ago, won't let go of. Guess what? You're going to you're going to be suffering and it may not be from the coronavirus. It may be from a different disease and you don't know why. Why am I so uneasy? Why am I so frustrated? Because you won't let go of the past. Let me tell you something. Whether a parent hurt you, a sibling hurt you, a co-worker hurt you, a boyfriend hurt you, a husband hurt you, a wife, a kid, whomever it is, you can't fix it. It cannot be fixed. That's something that happened. But as long as you hold on to the hurt, to the pain, hey, Ephraim, to the hurt, to the pain, to the aggravation, it's going to infiltrate in your spirit, heart, mind, and that is going to cause you more bodily harm. Hey, Arkenny, more bodily harm, more weight on your soul than you can ever imagine. Like I said recently when I posted my little banner, a lot of times when you are overweight, physically overweight, it's because you're burdening yourself with a lot of weighted stuff you can't fix. So your mom didn't do what she was supposed to do. So your ex-husband fucked around. So your kids disrespected you and, and rough, rough, roughed you up. All of those things could have happened and may have happened. But it gets to a point where you got to look at you and say, what can I do in the now, right now? What can I do to forgive it? And I'm not talking about saying, okay, I accept the apology. I'm not talking about that kind of forgiveness. You have got to learn about the practice of forgiveness. You cannot just say, okay, I accept your apology. And that's it. That's all. No, understand something. 
when I created the forgiveness series and hashtag that hashtag the forgiveness series in the menu here on Facebook hashtag forgiveness series and you can watch all the episodes where I talked about forgiveness and I spent hours and weeks on it <coughs> excuse me so I want you to understand I understand it is hard to forgive sometimes I get it trust me I know I had somebody I wouldn't I didn't forgive for like years and do I admit to the fact that that burden costed me a lot yes it did that's why I'm able to speak about it forgiveness we have to let go of but in the letting go of it we can't just say it we can't just say I accept your apology that's the easy part that's not how it works you have to get you have to dissipate all thought about it you have to com completely dissipate all conversations about it you have to let go of any crossing of the mind because the mind has 70,000 thoughts a day. So with that said, when you have all those thoughts going on in your head and in your mind, you have to understand that out, out, out the rip, we have times where we can sit back and have this thought cross our mind. And if we don't allow the, 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 uh, the thought to cross and pass, we will hold on to that thought. We will hold on to it. And in holding on to it, it's showing that you're not forgiving it that's the truth so if you have a sibling and you two are in agreement mama didn't do this and mama didn't do that and mom did this and mom did that and you're on the phone conversating about what mama didn't do and then that one's talking about yeah remember when mom said this and she did that yeah and now you got all this energy going right back into the same scenario that happened 13 years ago and now guess what the energy of the unforgiveness resurfaces so now that you have brought up and drummed up the hurt, the pain, the disappointment of what your parent didn't do, now it's back again. You just added more in energy, or we can use we can even use a gas tape, a gasoline uh, bottle, and say we just pour more back gasoline on the flame of how you were hurt before. And guess what? That energy now has raised back up in your heart, mind, spirit. And now you're upset all over again. And guess what that does for your body? It brings, I said it earlier, it allows your body to raise up into fight and flight mode, which now means your heart rate is racing. Your blood pressure is raising. Guess what happens? All dis-ease, diseases can infiltrate in and in, in plant itself inside your spirit and inside your heart and mind and in your body. It invades it. It's easy. It's a playground for disease. So as long as you're on the phone with your sister about what your mom didn't do and she's talking, yeah, girl, I know. That's why mama this and mama that. All of that is energy. All of that is energy. So guess what? Now the un you told your mom you forgave her, but now it's, it's null and void. So you said it, but that don't mean shit because now you've already drummed it back up and now you and your sister are conversating about what she didn't do. Or how she treated you. Or how y'all didn't have lights. And you didn't, you know, mom did this and mom did that. That's energy. That is actually helping the unforgiveness to live in your heart and soul, in your sister's heart and soul. So as y'all two are conversating and you told mom you forgave her, but you really didn't because you're still talking about it. That's just, that's just, it's oxymoron. So now it's costing you a setback. So now you're right back to being upset with mom about what she didn't do. Or, and, and I talk about this in relationships all the time. I talk about it. You tell your mate you're not upset no more. and Okay, I forgive you. Y'all kiss and make up and shit like that. And then right again, when you feel some type of way, or he makes you upset about something totally different, you go right back to that scenario. Now guess what? You told him you forgave him, but you really didn't forgive him. You said it, it sounded good, but you really didn't. Because at the end of the day, you brought it back up. So when you bring up and drum up old shit and you bring it up again, guess what happens? It relives. And when you relive an issue, a scenario, a hurt, a pain, a disappointment, it just causes you to stay rooted in that unforgiveness. And let me tell you something. Just because unforgiveness is rooted in your soul... Don't think that you're 
you're uh, exempt. What, you think I never unforgave somebody? I've done it all the time. And then turned around and would talk about it. That's how come I could talk about this stuff. I used to do it all the time. Oh, yeah, I forgive you. But then turn around and be like, girl, man, please. Did this and did that. That's energy. When somebody does something to you, you're disappointed, you're hurt, you're mad, you're upset. Okay, but you can't fix it. You can't go back and fix it. So what are you going to do? Are you going to be able to say, okay, I can't fix this, but what I can do is I can let it go. Not just let it go in words, though. You got to let it go in practice. The best way to practice letting something go is let go of the thoughts about it. Stop talking about it. And even more so, stop thinking about it. All of those things I just said is energy. And those energies that I'm telling you about, which is vocal energy, talking about it, listening to it, all of those things causes us to have, uh, I mean, unforgiveness going all in the mind, body, and soul. Okay. And we may think we're good at practicing forgiveness, right? Oh, I got that down pat. I know how to forgive, honey. I can do that. I know how to forgive. Okay. Let somebody put their hands on your babies. Let somebody murder your son, your daughter. Let somebody come in and, and, and cheat on your husband. Oh, yeah. All this shit is real. And we talk about how good at forgiveness we are, but really, we're not. We're not good. I done seen some woman. Let me tell you something. There was a woman that stood in a courtroom. She had her only son was murdered on a random and she stood in her heartbeat of her grief and told the man that murdered her son that she forgave him i would have been a mess collapsed i couldn't have done that and i'm like how do you get there in forgiveness how do you get there i i listen i i pray i, I was like man her forgiveness level was on some other level stuff. I was like, I don't even think I could do that. And I and, and listen, I talk about forgiveness. But you take my only son? Man, listen. So the reason why I'm telling you how important it is to really focus on forgiveness is because I get it. I can be very confident in my forgiveness. Honey, I know how to forgive. Oh, yeah. Yes, I can forgive really good. Oh, no, you can't. There was one time a lady tried to be abusive to my father. I had to make a phone call. Oh, hold on a minute. I took care of that. But no, you're not going to come at my daddy. You're not going to come at my kids. You're not going to come at this and you're not going to come at that. Now, I'll be damned if you do this to that and do this. But understand lovelies forgiveness is a practice because what we say we will forgive today doesn't necessarily mean that's going to be our same mindset, our same mindset when it comes to forgiving you know what i'm saying when it comes to forgiving uh somebody that's harming our kids somebody that harms my babies or my grandson i will i will go nuts over that but I can say I'm confident in my forgiveness. I'm very confident. Oh, I know how to forgive, honey. I'm good at it. No, the hell I'm not. Not always. There's been moments I haven't been good at forgiveness. I, it took me years to forgive somebody that I love being raped by her own brother. It took me fucking years to get over that. And she forgave it before I did. Good morning, Rolanda. So I'm just keeping it a buck. I don't, I don't have set step. Or tell y'all I'm perfect. Because there ain't nothing about me perfect. I'm always a student of life. I am a wisdom coach and help people to get through it. But I'm, I'm honest with y'all, man. I have struggled with forgiveness. It has not been easy. Especially when it came to a scenario like that. So I'm wanting you guys to really hone in on. We say we're confident in our forgiveness, but we're not. A lot of times we're not. 
I mean, it could be it could be little petty stuff we will hold on to for weeks and weeks and months and months and years and years. Mom didn't do this. Daddy didn't do that. Sister didn't do this. Okay. So what we have to sit back and look at is, okay, how do I, how do I learn to practice forgiveness? Forgiveness is not something you can just do. It's something you have to practice. And you have to practice even when it's something that someone did not do intentionally to hurt you. That's another thing. A lot of times we think, well, they did, they did this and they did that, but it may not have been intentional. You may have gotten hurt just because you was in the wrong place at the wrong time. But you're going to hold on to the unforgiveness? No. We have to learn to grow. And we have to learn to understand that forgiveness takes time, sometimes longer than others for us. But we have to learn that any time we continue to continue to just keep fueling thoughts, negativity, conversations, um, actions, we keep talking about something over and over again, and we keep drumming up an old hurt, it, it'll surface because the mind only can do what the mind you allow the mind to do. So if, if I want to remember how amazing it is when I will walk on the white shores in the Bahamas with my parents, if I want to go back to that mind, to that memory, I can do that. I can remember just as clear as I'm talking to you now, how good the white sand on my feet walking on that shore felt. I could tell you about it. So if I can get that quickly into that memory, so quickly and so, I mean, if I can do that, imagine what I can do if I want to go back to a hurt, to a pain. I could tell you, I, matter of fact, I'll use it prime example. When I had went through my divorce or was getting ready to go through a divorce, I remember the last teardrop that dropped on my baby girl's onesie. That's how little she was. She's small. She was smaller than my baby grandson. And I had cried a tear and I said, this is the last time I'm going to cry over this marriage. And I cried a tear and the teardrop dropped on my baby, on my baby girl's onesie. I remember that just like that. Just by telling y'all, I remember that in an instant. So the power of the mind, Hey, Yana, the power of the mind can really cultivate unforgiveness. If we hold on to stuff that we can't fix it's going to cultivate a way for any disease i'm not just talking about coronavirus i'm talking about any disease to come into the body because it is a playground because when you are hot and upset and mad and i remember my mama didn't do this mama didn't do that and you're getting all in a frenzy or my husband did this and i remember that when you do that your body automatically goes into fight or flight mode okay so a like we can say it's, it's a it's a minor in your brain. Hey, there's a there's a war going on. Hey, we need to turn this up. Get that blood pressure up. She's about to start fighting. And then what happens? We're inflamed. Our bodies are inflamed. Our mind is so crazy upset. We're mad because he did this and she did that. Oh my God, do you remember that? And then the body just only knows to fight. That's all the body knows to do. I just got to fight. Okay. Now that you're fighting, your body's inflamed, your blood pressure's high, your hurts are back to the surface, and now guess what? Disease is just scrolling around, trying to see how can I infiltrate into this body? I need to see when that body is weakened, the immune system is weakened, where can I go to land? Ooh, she's, she's hot over there. Viruses love heat. Ooh, she hot too. Let me go. And here it comes, all that disease, all that virus, all the epidemic, all up in your soul now. Because you did what? You wouldn't let it go. But if it comes to you, just as an example, I'm just going to give this to you for free. And y'all know I got courses out here, but today I'm going to be nice and generous. But there's courses if you really want to learn about something that I have. But right now I'm going to give you this for free. If you sit down. And you find yourself upset about something that your man did, your parent did, your kid did, and that crosses your mind. Say, I let it go. 
Don't give it energy. Don't conversate about it. Don't talk about it. Allow the thought to come and go. Thoughts come and go all day. 70,000 minutes. I mean, uh, 70,000 thoughts come in our mind a day. So when those thoughts surface, allow them to come. But let them go. You don't got to feed it energy. You don't. Matter of fact, it's better if you don't. Because when you start feeding energy to that, you're going to find yourself right back into that memory of that shit. And then you're right back upset. Don't do that to yourself. You want to get healthier. You want to get more fruitful life. You want to have more of a balanced life. You want to build wealth. You want to be immortal. Like, I, that's my goal. I want to be immortal. I don't want to die. I just want to be immortal. If I can do that, all my works that I'm doing right now is going to live forever. I, I'll be gone. But, hey, I'm, I, I have a reason to be here, which is to help the mankind to understanding we are bigger than this. Yes, viruses are out here all the freaking time. This ain't nothing new. But we got to stop getting so cultivated in, oh my God. I'm so upset about what my ex did, what my mate did, what my kid did. You got to let that go, man. Because forgiveness is a practice, baby. It's a practice. Hey, Kareem, it is a, it is a practice. And you can sit around and think you're confident with your forgiveness if you want to. I don't care how damn good you think you are. Something will put you on your damn knees and make you think, damn, I thought I was good at forgiving. You're not. <laughs> you have to practice it. It doesn't, it, it's not an easy thing to do. I'm sorry. We, we can, we've been taught to say, I'm sorry. We've been taught to say, I accept your apology, but we really don't know how to practice forgiveness. We don't. We don't know how to practice that. And it doesn't come easy either. But sometimes we have to sit back and look at things a little differently. And if we're going to keep adding fuel to this fire about how upset we are that uh, he's not doing this and she did that. and Oh my goodness, my mate used to do this to me. All that stuff is, is, is null and void. Problem with us is we either live in the future too much. Or we live in the past too much. And normally those of us that have the hardest time with, with, with unforgiveness and, and forgiving someone is that we tend to not live in the present time. We live in the past. And the reason we're living in the past, I want you to make note of this. If you're not listening to nothing else, I'm going to tell you why you're living in the past. You are living in the past because you're not in your purpose You are living in your past because you're not in your purpose. When you're in your purpose, you're present. You're here now. But a lot of times, even when people are watching me, they're not really here or present with me. They're on their past thinking about what happened years ago. Or they're so futuristic, they're hoping and wishing for things to happen. But they're not present. They're not in the now. Right now, you can truly be moving your life into a better, higher realm just by taking just by taking the time to sit down and say, what do I have right now that I can do to make sure I don't keep fueling this fire? My unforgiveness is heavy, man. And I'm going to tell you another great way to know if your unforgiveness is heavy. Look at your body work. Look at your body weight. You out of shape. 30, 40, 50, 100, 200, 300 pounds overweight. Well, nine times out of 10, that's because your burden in your soul is overweight with a lot of unforgiveness. You're holding on to stuff that you can't fix. You're allowing all of that stuff to just be fueling your spirit with all this heaviness and then you're like i can't get this weight off of me get the weight off of you stop start dissipating those thoughts let me tell you something the only way something's going to keep resurfacing is if we keep allowing it to resurface if we keep allowing for the under the energy the unforgiveness to stay here 
we can show unforgiveness to door. It's just a means of us being proactive in doing that. A lot of times we don't want to think about that. We just, oh, I'm just so burdened by what mom didn't do. And, and sometimes we're addicted to that. We're addicted to that. We like to talk about what someone else didn't do. But that don't mean a hill of beans if you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, which is getting busy on your purpose and why you're here. Do you even know why you're here? If you don't, that's something you need to think about. Tomorrow ain't promised. And look at us now. We all on quarantine and some people don't even know why they're here. It's a good time to get busy on that. You want to know about that? Go to my course, Awaken Your, Awakening Your Gifts. If you want to learn something about forgiveness, man, and you're really serious, I, ha I am a part of a group called Inner Elevation Forgiveness Group. If you guys want to be a part of that group, it is a subscription-based group. It is $25 a month. If you want to get serious about it, then you'll, you'll be inboxing me to do that. Um, it's also on my page. If you want to go and join it, you got to do that. But I I'm not telling you to do something you don't want to do. But at the end of the day, um, we need to get serious about our forgiveness or our lack thereof, should I say. Because if we don't get serious about not getting um, a grip to what we're not forgiving, we're going to find ourselves miserable in more ways than one. Because a lot of times when you're not forgiving some things, it keeps your life in the balance. It keeps your life in misery. It keeps your life stagnant. I'm just saying. Inner Elevation Forgiveness Group. If you want to be a part of that, inbox me. And like I said, it's a $25 cost a month. But at the end of the day, if you bring us four people, we'll pay for you. But at the end of the day, we got nothing to do right now. Some of us are not working. Some of us are just at home. Why not learn about forgiveness? Forgiveness of your past. Forgiveness of your sadness. Forgiveness of things you didn't do. Forgiveness of self is huge. A lot of times we don't want to talk about that we didn't forgive. We, we forgave this and forgave that, but we didn't forgive ourselves. For poor choices or decisions we made. That's another part of forgiveness. There's a lot to forgiveness that we are not being mindful of. But if we want to forgive something, we have to start to sit back and say, well, I have to practice this. Are you practicing forgiveness? Because a lot of times, like I said, we'll talk about shit that's old as hell, old as dirt, still bringing it up, still talking about it, still, still bringing it up. And then what? <laughs> And then our unforgiveness is heavy. Then we're like, I don't even know why I'm so depressed. You're depressed because you won't let it go. You won't let the stuff go. You just keep bringing it up, bringing it up, bringing it up, bringing it up. And if you're not talking about it, you're thinking about it. Instead of thinking about your purpose and why you're here. I'm just saying. Like I said, if you want to be a part of the Inner Elevation Forgiveness Group, inbox me personally. But it is a cost. It's a subscription cost. It's not free. Let me tell you something about forgiveness. When you get to the point that you can sit back and be peaceful in the mind, you can start to be able to elevate and focus on something else. Understand something. When something is in your mind and you are allowing it to just sit in it, it is taking up a lot of your time. I mean, it's taking up a lot of your time that you could be doing something else. As long as you sit in and stay rooted in the hurt and pain of what daddy didn't do or mama didn't do or uncle didn't do or, oh, my God, my kids this and my kids that. As long as you stay focused on that, you're going to continue to be in this cycle of hurts and pains and not allowing yourself to grow up out of it. I'm just saying. Uh, if you want, if you don't want this ease in the body, in the spirit, in the soul, you can't be constantly thinking about what someone did to you or what someone, how someone disappointed you. Because if you do, it is a direct way for any type of virus or any type of disease to come in and just sit and get rooted, period. Trust me.
like I said, if you want to be a part of the Inner Elevation Forgiveness Group, you need to holler at your girl. For real, for real. Because at the end of the day, I had to learn how to practice forgiveness. Also, if you want to uh, have a coach, a wisdom coach, inbox me. I'm just an inbox away. I just, like I said, I'm busy trying to commit myself into really elevating those that really need the help. And those really wanting to invest in themselves. I'm not wasting my energy and time on people that's just talking. I ain't got that to do. All right. So I'm out of here, guys. Again, if you really want to be a part of a group that's going to help elevate you out of some stuff, you need to come over there and join us. Inner Elevation Forgiveness Group. Powerful group. Powerful group. And not to mention, we're going to really help you to understand the power of letting things go. And if you're ready to let those things go, I'm telling you what, not only when you let it go, it helps you to lose your weight, physical weight. It helps you lose depression, not chronic depression, but depression that you just, I just can't get over this. You want to be a part of my group? Let me know. Also, I have, like I said, I have courses out here. One of my major courses is learn to unlearn. Listen. You want to learn to unlearn some things, you need to get on those courses. You guys have nothing to do right now. I mean, I'm still working, but a lot of people are not. So if you don't have anything to do, get busy on yourself. Start learning to love you. Shine on loving oneself. You know I got a you know I got a a, a brand, solo. Y'all know that. I'm not telling y'all nothing y'all don't know. You know. Solo stands for shine on loving oneself. This is important. You got to shine on loving you. I'm just saying. So if you don't want to have to fuss and fight with this ease in the body, you got to start learning to forgive somebody. And the first somebody should be you. All right. So I'm out of here. Make sure you share this video. It's Carla Nicole. I'm signing off. Best kept.